Hi guys, John Jackson here with Alliance Insurance Services. Today I want to talk about insurance reviews. Now usually this is something you do once every year. It's called your annual insurance review and I'm sure you've done this with your agent on a regular basis and if not, you really need to. So anyway, let's talk about reviews and more specifically, you can do review anytime you're unsure really what's covered and what's not amongst what you own. So I'm going to talk about how to conduct your own personal review and what that looks like. So let's move on. So I'm sure your first question is, why do I need to do an insurance review in the first place? I mean, that's my insurance agent's job. He should know or she should know what I should have and they should just let me know, right? So that sounds like it should be the case. But think about this. No one knows what you have better than you. So being proactive, just like making a budget or any other responsible way that you manage your finances and your assets, being proactive when it comes to insurance helps to ensure that you don't miss anything and that you're adequately protected. So it's really important to do a review every once in a while to make sure that there's not some big thing missing that maybe you really, really need covered. So. That's why you should do a review yourself at least once a year in addition to the review that you do with your agent. So now that we've kind of talked about that, let's really get into what a review looks like. So the first thing you're going to want to do is look at the most basic levels of insurance, right? I mean, your auto and your home and find gaps and coverages there. So most of you have a car or a truck or some some kind of vehicle. So you have a policy that protects those vehicles. You have an auto policy. I want you to go ahead and look at your auto policy and then look at the vehicles that you have and do the math. If you are in an at-fault accident and your car is totaled, will your policy cover it? If you've got liability only, I can tell you right now it's not going to. So right off the bat, if you have liability only, you're taking a massive risk. If you do something that puts you at fault, then you could lose your vehicle. And for most of us, that's a massive, massive problem, especially because that's how we get to work. So you need to think about your auto policy in a different way, other than just how much you pay every month or every year. Now, secondly, what you need to do is think about the liability aspect. If you have minimum limits, I want you to compare those minimum limits to a brand new Mercedes or BMW. Because if you go out there and you hit one and you total it, that's coming out of the liability portion of your auto policy. Think about that. If the math doesn't add up, if you look and see what a brand new Mercedes costs and you look at your liability coverage and they don't match up, you might need more coverage. So minimum limits almost never provide enough protection if you hit even a mid-range sedan in the modern world. I mean, we're basically driving around in computers with wheels. So if you don't have the right amount of coverage, that's a massive gap. Now let's talk about your homeowner's policy. Your homeowner's policy is something that if you're a homeowner, you have. I mean, over 90% of homeowners have policies on their house. But if you're a renter, you probably don't. Over half of renters have no coverage whatsoever for their personal belongings. And that's what a renter's policy covers. So if your neighbor next door, right across the wall, has a fire, then you could be in massive, massive trouble and you could lose everything. So if you don't have a renter's policy and you are a renter, that's a massive, massive gap in your coverage right off the bat. Well, let's move on though. You're also going to want to look at your personal property. So most of us have personal property uh, that's covered on whatever policy we have, right? I mean, a renter's policy, that's exactly what it covers. And your homeowner's policy has personal property protection built into the policy itself. So this is great, right? It's wonderful coverage. But there are certain items that are covered, kind of. They're covered on a limit basis, okay? So they only are covered for up to certain amounts. And these amounts are a lot less than you think. It could be $1,000, it could be $2,000, $2,500, depending on the item itself. And we're talking about 
high value items. We're talking about jewelry, we're talking about furs, we're talking about firearms, and that's something that most people just assume is covered under their policy. If you have a lot of firearms, if you collect guns, someone comes into your house and steals them, which is very common. Firearms are one of the most commonly stolen items in a house. It's not going to be covered up to full value unless you have special coverage if they're added to what we call scheduled on the property or if they have their own uh, policy in and of itself. So that's the kind of thing you need to think about. All of your high value items, fine art, silverware, whatever it might be, if you don't have those scheduled onto your homeowner's policy or your renter's policy, or if they're not under their own policy, which we call an inland marine policy, you don't have to remember that, that's your agent's job, just call them and find out, but you need to ask that question. If you don't see that there, if you do a list and you look at your stuff and you think, gosh, do I have any sort of extra protection on my policy? If you don't know the answer to that, you need to call your agent. And this is exactly the kind of thing that a review helps you find. The last part of your self-review is very simple. I want you to look at everything you own that's not your cars and not your house. Anything that has value, if you own it and it's not covered, it's probably a gap in coverage. So if you have a boat and you don't have boat owner's insurance, you should probably get boat insurance. If you have a motorcycle and you don't have your motorcycle covered, I don't know how you got away with that, but you should probably get motorcycle insurance. If you own property and you own other possessions and you have some amount of worth that you've worked really hard to have, you and you don't have an umbrella policy, you need a personal umbrella policy. And I've talked about this in other videos. If you want more information on it, go to our website, go to our blogs. I've got some stuff written about this. Look at total net worth. Uh, ensuring your total net worth. That's something on our website that we've done that can really help you determine if you need this. And the answer is probably yes. Um, but go ahead and look at that. That's another big place that most people don't have. If you have rental properties, if you have secondary homes, if you have a beach house and you don't have coverage on that stuff, I mean, number one, I don't know how you don't, but there are people that don't. So all of that needs to be covered. Basically, if you own something, and something bad could happen and take it away from you, it's a gap in coverage. Last thing I want to talk about here, and then I'll let you go and enjoy your day, is life and health insurance. The most important thing that you have is your life and your health. If you don't have that covered, you know, I, that's the most basic thing that you need. So life insurance is incredibly affordable, especially if you are young and if you're healthy. So start early because it can really add up and the value in life insurance is absolutely outstanding. At some point in the future, I'm going to do a bigger video on life insurance, uh, but I, there's so much that I've been wanting to cover and talk to you about. Uh, so I'll get to that eventually. But Really, life insurance is key. If you don't have it, call your agent immediately. Have that conversation. At least get the information so you can decide, okay, I can't do it now. Why don't I do it in a few months? Or why don't I do it soon? Plan that out. And as far as health insurance goes, we pretty much all have to have it now. And so if you don't have health insurance, or let's be more realistic, what if you don't like your health insurance? What if your job has really terrible health insurance? Or if you've been paying for a policy and you really don't think that that's that good, or if you're 65 or older and you really are confused about the options that you have, call your agent and talk about health insurance because there's so much more to know. And it's the kind of thing where, especially in this modern confusing world and the healthcare environment that we have, you need to talk to a specialist and find out really what's going on in the world of health insurance. So get those covered. So that's it. That's why you do a self-review and that's how you do a self-review. It's really simple. Find out what you own and find out if it's covered. And that's pretty much it. Go ahead, look at the bottom of this video. There's a blog attached to it. Go there and check it out. If you have questions, ask us here at Alliance. We do insurance reviews literally every day. And this is what we do for a living. If you aren't one of our clients, reach out and we'll be happy to help you if your agent doesn't really like doing this kind of stuff. So fill out the contact form on our website, reach out to us, give us a call, shoot us an email. We will be happy to help you 
find and make sure that you have the protection that you need. Thanks and bye.